Hello, hello everyone, I'm MVL and welcome to the MVL Gaming live stream. Today we're going to take a special look at my Doctor Who video collection. We're going to take a, a good look at all of my Doctor Who videos, VHSs, some DVDs and some Blu-rays towards the end. But mostly my videos, I've got a ton of them, been collecting them forever. And it's so cool to be able to show you guys. Let me give you a look at what we're going to be dealing with in this stream. Let me show you what we have right here. And this is just the tip of the iceberg right here. If we look down, look at all of these videos. I'm going to show them to you guys. All right. Let me get the camera back to where it should be. <laughs> Alright guys, we're going to start off with the first Doctor, as we should do. We're going to take a look at some special edition videos as well. So first up, let me show you uh, Doctor Who, The Crusade and The Space Museum. Now this is a big set. This is a special edition. I believe these are fairly valuable. Some of these will be fairly valuable now with Doctor Who's rise in popularity. Some of these sort of things will have gone up in value. And this is really cool. Uh, on the back here it contains a number of extras, as you can see, which is pretty sweet. And it has uh, some collector postcards inside, a video, a collector CD, and a TARDIS keyring. We'll see what's actually still in here. They did a number of this kind of set as well. This is the only one I have. But uh, I have a couple of other special editions along the way as well. We'll show you those as well. So I'm going to open this up. I haven't looked in this for a while, so we'll see we'll see if it's all still in there, which would be pretty cool. Let's uh let's open this up. If I can, see what's inside and uh what we have got in here. Uh, there we go. Alright, got it open. <laughs> Alright, the video is still in there, that's the important thing, the video is still in there. Of course many of the Doctor Who's will have um been moved on to DVDs. I started collecting Doctor Who DVDs quite late and uh, now it's come to the advent of Blu-rays um, probably a good idea to pick up the Blu-ray set they are starting to release whole seasons on Blu-ray um, and maybe what I end up doing because a lot of videos won't, uh, won't play so good now um, but there you go this is in perfect condition this one here that is the Crusade and Space Museum on that video and then we have the oh the postcard sets still there still together that's pretty cool I'll give you guys a look at those. Some postcards from it. Some of these, uh, some of these will contain postcards. Uh, some of the, uh, some of the videos. But I think many of them may well have been lost. Pretty cool. Some clips from the set. First Doctor there, as you can see. Pretty nice. I'll put this all back nicely later. And uh, there is the Crusade CD. I've got a lot of um, Doctor Who audio dramas as well, a ton of that sort of thing. And um, that could be its own video in itself. And then the keyring's still in there. Yeah! The uh, TARDIS keyring, pretty sweet. So that's all in there. I'm gonna go put that back nicely. <laughs> I'm gonna go put it back nicely, but for now I'm just gonna put it aside. All right. Next up, another special edition. This is uh, a steelbook for videos. Two videos in here. This is a uh, Doctor Who limited edition. As you can tell, Cybermen on the front of this one, and it is uh, Attack at Cybermen and the Tenth Planet. Pretty cool. Unfortunately, it has succumbed to a little bit of rust on the top here. Otherwise, in pretty good condition. And open that up. And inside here we have a cross Doctors. A cross Doctors. How about that? We have the Tenth Planet. With the first Doctor, appropriately. Really cool. Love the original Cybermen. I don't know if you can see it on the back there. Crazy design of them. And then we have Colin Baker. And this episode here. Linked together by Cybermen. This one's pretty interesting, actually. Cybermen are going up against these other aliens. And then there's some clips on the back here. And all of these have the videos in them. 
Uh, these are all the ones I could find as well. I have more. I'm certain of it. Just couldn't find them. Uh, lost in time and space, perhaps. All right. On to more of uh, the original Doctor. We have a really good one. The Chase. Now, this one I do remember some more about. This is a good one. Uh, in this one, the Doctor, William Hartnell. Hey, Bunny Bunny, how are you doing? Congratulations, my friend, and welcome to the stream. Uh, in this one, the Doctor is um, being chased by the Daleks. They've made a time machine of their own. I remember another episode where there's a... It could be this one as well, to be fair. Uh, my memory is foggy. Perhaps that is lost in time and space. Um, where they made a clone of the Doctor and he battled him. It wasn't a clone, actually. It was a robot. And they, they fought. Got your tapes? Hey, Banana Red, how you doing? Uh, we've got a fair few tapes. <laughs> we've got a fair few tapes. I'm going to have to check because I don't exactly know which ones I have, but we'll go through them. But yeah, this is a good one. And this is in... This is in this kind of cardboard case. Um, not the best protective style of case, but still good to have it. You can see some clips of the uh, episode on the back. Most of them will be in plastic cases. Most of them will be. And here we have another. More of the First Doctor. We have uh, The Rescue and The Romans are on this two video set. Two episodes in there. Pretty cool. Two episodes in this particular case. If you open it up, both of the videos are in there. Normally you'll have advertisements inside for more Doctor Who's and things like that. It's pretty cool. More tapes that they might have come around to releasing. And then we have the Ark. Another First Doctor adventure. You may notice I've got these in some semblance of order on the back here. I'm going to have to skim over some of these because I've got so many of these to talk about. <laughs> I'm going to have to skim over some of them. Um, another good one. This is in one of the more modern style of cases. Um, many of these will have like artwork on the front, which I think like almost hand-drawn style artwork, which is what I find the most appealing out of anything. And that's what makes it really cool to collect these. But these, uh, these were some of the later releases that had these kind of... Um, Almost Photoshop style cases. Here you have the Gunslingers. Another First Doctor adventure. Again, it's a shame that so many, um, so many episodes were lost. But that's just, it's a shame. Like, they may never be recovered, but we got a lot of them. At least for Doctor Who, all of the audio has been preserved. For other shows, like the Avengers, um, so many of those were lost. You know, Dad's Army lost a load of episodes. Morecambe and Wise lost a lot. Um, but for Doctor Who, at least all of the audio has been preserved. Now here we've got the War Machines. On this episode here, another modern case with that kind of Photoshop style. Trevor, how are you doing? Who is this Doctor you keep talking about? Doctor? Doctor Who? I know, right? <laughs> uh, the War Machines, there's the back of it. Love the, uh, love the design of the enemies in this. The, yeah, the robots look so, so, so kind of clunky. So of the period. Um, Daleks, of course, are aliens because uh, the BBC didn't want to do robots. They didn't want to do kind of like obvious sci-fi stuff. So they got around with Daleks by making them aliens. Uh, that's how they kind of work their magic there. Another first Doctor adventure, another double set. We have the uh, Keys of Marius, I want to say. Marinus? <laughs> I'll go with that. <laughs> another one of the later style covers. Pretty cool. I like how on the back here, they like colour the images to make it look like it's not black and white for some reason. As if they're trying to fool you into thinking it's colour. Uh, another one with two two videos in there, stretched across two parts. That's something that happened. Doctor Who is definitely one of the best television series of all times. It is indeed, Trevor. I love Doctor Who. That's why I've got such a, a massive collection of it that I'm going to go through right now. Uh, yeah, huge fan of Doctor Who. It's still going to this day. Been going forever. Um, but yeah, Doctor Who is great, and that's why I, that's why I kind of went across like, hey, why don't I just talk about all my videos? They've been they've been sitting here since the dawn of time. I want to go and show you some of them. Um, we're gonna move on to the next Doctor. We're gonna regenerate now on the stream. We're gonna take a look at the next Doctor up, Patrick Troughton. He's a really good one as well. Are you different today? I'm I'm just wearing a jacket. It's pretty cold. 
<laughs> Perhaps I've regenerated. VHS is really nice throwback back to the old days of Simplified Entertainment. Uh, well, the, <laughs> except the risk of you having a tape eaten, that's true. I, I've lost many a tape, I've lost many a tape. In fact, soon we're gonna get on to, um, we're gonna get onto a tape that is missing some, uh, missing some part of it. <laughs> I, I think it's missing the case. Uh, fortunately, all of these have the tapes inside. Don't know if they all work because of time. Anyway, Ron Patrick Trouton, this is the Tomb of the Cybermen. This is a really, really good episode. It's really good. I can't, I can't state that enough. I mean, so many of these are, especially the earlier ones. But this is a really good Cybermen episode. Um, the archaeologists are meddling around and they awaken the Cybermen from their tombs and they have to deal with it. It's a great episode. Uh, the start of this, there's like a little video bit where they uh, celebrate uh, Doctor Who having been going for, at this time, for 20 years. Uh, but, you know, beyond that since then. Um, and this has exclusive introduction by director Morris Barry, as I mentioned. Um, yeah, this is really good. This episode was lost. They found it, I think, in just a, just a cupboard in the, <laughs> in the BBC. It's crazy that that happened. But, yeah, it was lost and they found it. Great that they found it, because this is one of my favourite episodes of Doctor Who. It's really good. Human aside, man. And then, secondly, on the second Doctor, I have another special set. The Ice Warriors collection here, from the second Doctor. Um, and, you know, I've, I found so much stuff trying to dig through my tapes. I, I don't think I found all of it, as I mentioned before, but I, I found so much stuff. Um, and this is one of them. Pretty cool. Uh, it looks like it has uh, a special book, two videos, and a collector's CD included on the back of it. We'll open this up and take a look at them. And it opens up like this. I, I'm, I kind of don't like the cardboard cases because they get uh, eaten up or beat up really easily. And then one of the Missing Years tapes. Missing Years because so much of it is, uh, is absent, which is a shame. And uh, this is, again is a cardboard case, but uh, it's vaguely well protected. Pretty good. And then over here we have the Ice Warriors. This um, this is complete, I believe, this episode. It's a good episode. Good episode again. Oop, except this is kind of beat up. I must have I must have watched this a lot. The Ice Warriors is another good episode. Really cool. A lot of these have gone to DVD. I think all of the Doctor Who that is out there has gone to DVD. So if you wanted to pick up. Doctor Who, it is available on DVD and some of it's getting ported to Blu-ray as well. So there you go, there's that. And then we have uh, this booklet as well with some history on it. It's pretty neat. Pretty neat, full of information. And uh, that's that collector set. Hey Otaku, thanks for dropping that like my friend. Much appreciated buddy. Thank you, the more likes we have the more people catch the stream. And this is a... Uh, a very unusual stream for me. We're looking at my Doctor Who videos. Um, but I've been wanting to do this for a long time, so I thought it would. I did mention we had a, uh, a video missing the case. So here it is. Don't have the case for this. Don't know what happened to it. I know I've seen this. It's, it's Seeds of Death. We're on to the third Doctor now. And uh, this one, I, I, I don't remember much about it, except I'm pretty sure there's giant maggots in this. Like, giant maggots. And it's, uh, I think that's what I remember from this. And this is a video, for those of you that don't know what videos are, like, that is a thing. Some people might not know what videos are. Um, they just, uh, they just tape. That's how it plays. Um, I thought I could lift that up, but I don't want to break it. <laughs> but, uh, there's tape there. You can see the tape in there. You can see the tape in there. Uh, that's how it plays. Unfortunately, it doesn't have a, it doesn't have a very long lifespan. So that's one problem with it. And, uh, yeah, this one's missing the case. So it probably doesn't work. Would to, love to have it in perfect quality and binge watch it. That is true. Unfortunately, I did go back and try and watch uh, some VHSs a while ago. And they, they, yeah, I mean, you get that thing where, like, the top and the bottom of the frame kind of, like, freaks out and, like, messes up um, because of, the um, because of like, the age of the tape. Uh, it's a shame it happens. Like, I've got games that are on tapes, uh, you know, video games for the Commodore, and I, I pretty much can't play them. But most of this will go to DVD. All right, next up we have the Doctor's Nemesis. The Doctor's Nemesis. It lifts some pressing of both ends, you think. That's fair. Maybe I didn't do that. I don't want to screw it up. It might just be broken, in fairness. 
Like, one of these ends is coming up and one of them isn't, so this could just be broken. It was without a case. It was just without a case, so there's that. But, uh, yeah, there's tape. There's tape under there. <laughs> oh, wait, there's a button. Maybe I'm supposed to press... Yeah, I press... There's a button. I press the button. There's the tape. So there you can see it, which I have exposed to light now, which is not a good idea. But there you go. <laughs> there you can see it. There was a, there's a tiny little button to be pressed on the side there. Just there. And there you go. Alright, so anyway, we're, we're over to the, the Master. This is another Steelbook set. Uh, the Nemesis of the Doctor. There you go. <laughs> exactly. GG! We opened the tape! I know, I haven't done it in forever either. Um, and this includes Colony in Space and the Time Monster. Again, this has succumbed to rust. You can see the effects of rust on the top here. But other than that, it's pretty good, Nick. And this contains a couple of uh, videos in. The Master showed up for almost every uh, adventure that John Pertwee, the third Doctor, had. The Master was in almost every one of them. He was kind of like the Moriarty uh, to the Doctor, who was being more of a James Bond character during this period, which was kind of cool. Uh, and in this stage, the um, Doctor introduced Venusian Karate, which he would say things like, HAITA! And he would attack people with karate chops. It was kind of funny. Uh, but there's Colony in Space. There's an adventure there. These should be in great condition because they were in uh, the these tins. And uh, that's one of those there in the kind of more modern video cases. And then the Time Monster over here as well. Some of these episodes may have, uh, may have parts in black and white and in colour. Because um, some, of the, some of the episodes of these adventures would have been lost. I can see some black and white and some colour clips on the back of this one, for example. And they are able to restore the colour to these episodes because they were originally in colour and they were converted um, they were converted to black and white kind of quickly and it left information that they can use to make them back colour. It's really interesting. Uh, but of course they are also able to kind of colourise um, black and white things as it is but normally it doesn't look so so great. It's like uh, if you've seen Little Shop of Horrors, the original in black and white, they kind of colourise that. And uh, the, the plant looks really weird because, you know, they had to change the colours of it because it was never meant to look colour. But that's a thing. And uh, next up, uh, we've got more Fur Doctor. Many more Fur Doctor adventures because I was a big fan of uh, John Pertree and his Venusian Karate. Here we have Death to the Daleks. That's right. Look at that. That tells you everything you need to know on the front there. There's a Dalek on fire. This is a great episode as well. I remember this. This one is pretty scary. There's a part at the front, at the beginning of this episode, where the where the Tardis's power goes out, and uh, the Doctor's assistant is trying to get out of the Tardis, I believe, and uh, she's hunted by one of these monsters here, and it's it's done in like first person with like the breathing of the creature. It's really terrifying. Um, Sarah Jane Smith, I believe, was the assistant on this one. I, mean, I remember thinking as a kid, uh, used to be black and white in the early, <laughs> in the early days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, in fairness, I never really minded black and white. I know some people won't watch stuff black and white. Hey, Lydia, how are you doing? What's up, my friend? Welcome to the stream. We're going over some Doctor Who videos, of all things. I actually did get some games recently as well, so I can show some games at the end if you guys want. I got him in a trade with a good friend of mine, the Jonin Monkey. Now on the back, there's the, there's the creatures on the back that I was speaking of. They are pretty terrifying. And uh, this one was all in colour. And uh, on the planet they were on in this episode. Look at that. Screen Legends. Uh, I like this case. Um, on the planet they were on, technology wouldn't work. So the Daleks had to change their, um, their weapons to, like, basically pistols. Uh, so they didn't have the firepower they would normally have. Uh, likewise, people would have to fight the Daleks with bow and arrows and things like that. Pretty cool. And next up, another Daleks, because the Daleks are boss. They're all over the place uh, in, in this Doctor. We have the Day of the Daleks. How about that? There's a Dalek army on the front there. I remember when I was younger, all I really wanted was um, a company called Dapol at the time did Dalek uh, miniatures and in fact I went to I went to Dapple they, they used to make kind of uh, model train sets and things like that but they also made Doctor Who minis 
and I would go there and I would just always buy Doctor Who stuff. They had a Doctor Who exhibition there as well. Oh man, it was great. And uh, it reminds me of a uh, Dalek Killer comic as well that I picked up while I was there as well. And there was this dude with a chainsaw who would like kill Daleks. Oh, it was amazing. Good times, good times. Uh, but there you go. This one has uh, Brigadier Led Ledbridge Stewart in it. And the Daleks as well. And I think in this episode, the uh, the Doctor jousts with um, with the Master. They kind of have a battle with swords. And, um, you know, later on when, like, uh, the Master would become a woman or the Master would be male, you know, the, the, the genders would be different for the Doctor and the... Uh, and his nemesis, they kind of inferred a bit of flirting, and I get a sense of that in this, because the Master has some dialogue where he's like, uh, I do so enjoy our little chats, and like, the Doctor kind of gets like, oh, I'm really hungry around physical exertion, it's kind of, it kind of feels a bit like they're flirting, uh, they're of course both men in this one, but it is, if you look at it in that light, it is kind of like that. Um, next up, we have an episode with the Sontarans, this is The Time Warrior, another really, really good episode. Um, this one has one Centauran in, they go back in time, and he very much has the advantage with the technology he has available to him. Um, they often refer to, at least Sarah Jane did, uh, to the Centaurans as potato heads, because of how they look. Uh, they have a weakness on the back of their neck, like a small feeding tube, and uh, if you penetrate that you can destroy them very easily. But yeah, another, another good episode. You go, that's good to hear, Lydia. We've got uh, more, more John Pertwee next. And this one is uh, Carnival of Monsters. This one's a really interesting one. Uh, this character here, he has this, um, this device which contains many, many miniaturized monsters, including these ones that you see on the back here, but also Daleks and Cybermen. And uh, it, it's a carnival, but miniaturized. And I believe the, the monsters escape, or they're let loose uh, at the end of this. It's pretty cool. Another cool episode for Doctor Who there. I'm probably spending too long on these, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move on. Uh, next one, we have the Claws of Axos. Starring these crazy, crazy scary monsters. Uh, I remember them. They would have, they would appear to look one way, but they would actually look more grotesque. And this one again has the master in, as many of this uh, Doctor's episodes did. And you can see, uh, you see on the back here the two ways they they would look. So they would appear to be more uh, alluring as it would be below, but they would actually look more like that, more like the monsters. So pretty scary stuff for those. All right, next up. We have, I find it really interesting that they have episode cases, not volumes. Yeah, in fairness, it would be much easier to fit the collection because there, there are a ton of these. Um, but the tapes couldn't hold that much, uh, mu that much on them. So even if they had like big volumes, um, they would be absolutely massive. They've started to do that with Blu-rays now. Um, but the, the, these, these themselves have many episodes on them the the old adventures were split up into many into many episodes for doctor who so that these will be fairly long the runtime will be pretty long because there'll be multiple episodes in these i want three episodes on tape apps yeah pretty much that is what it is uh because um the the adventures would be broadcast over over a long period of time um the curse of uh peladon this one's really cool you've got ice warriors in this one but they're good guys, they're diplomats. Uh, this was actually referenced on uh, one of the later episodes, one of the more modern episodes of Alpha Centauri, which is like a one-eyed alien uh, that you can see on the back here, Alpha Centauri, uh, the one-eyed alien, which, which was referenced in one of the other episodes. So pretty cool. Uh, I remember the Doctor uh, hypnotizes uh, this creature here um, with, with some sort of song, which was pretty cool. Um, so yeah, another good episode. They're all good. Ep I mean, I'm gonna say they're all good episodes. SB Games Gamers, how are you doing, my friend? Welcome to the stream. What's up, buddy? This next one contains all three Doctors because it's the three Doctors, and this is another great episode, uh, bringing all three Doctors together. Unfortunately, the first Doctor was quite unwell in this, uh, so he couldn't do much. Um, but other than that, 
there were three doctors in this and that was cool as heck and then again another really crazy looking monster on the back here that the uh that you can see with all of those eyes kind of reminds me of power rangers in a little bit pretty cool all right seeing the doctor who collection is epic nice yeah i haven't featured the um doctor who videos before i thought i would you know, I've got so many, like, I thought I'd show them off. I don't have a complete collection by any means, but I've got a fair bit. Some castle, some type of building. Yeah, there was, um, Rassilon's Tower, which we'll get to, actually, was a big area. Eventually broke through the war. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like, a lot of epic stuff happened in, uh, in Doctor Who. Like, uh, this is a pretty epic one, actually. Spearheads from Space. This is, uh, this is a, a kind of interesting cover. Um, I, I prefer the ones that have like drawn artwork on the front. Um, this one kind of looks like you know an early Photoshop attempt. But this one features the Autons, which is living plastic, hence the dummies on the back. And I'm going to skip over these fairly quickly if I can, because we've got a heck of a lot to do. And then the Ambassadors of Death in the later Doctor Who case. You can tell that as well because of the logo. That's the uh, that's a classic Doctor Who logo, and then the more modern Doctor Who logo. This kind of logo I think appeared around the time of the movie, so that's the more modern logo. Um, the movie was you know okay. Uh, yeah, there you go, the Ambassadors of Death. And then next up, a double set. This is the Mind of Evil, has the Master in it as well. Sixteen ninety nine price still on it. Um, I don't know where this was, maybe this was HMV, looks like it. Um, the clips on the back are in black and white, so this could be another episode that was uh, found by not the original footage. That's pretty cool. And then, with that, we are past the Pertry years. There you go, John Pertry, the Pertry years. Gotta have that in your Doctor Who collection. He is one of the greats. Uh, faced many a monster. And uh, I, I do hope to get the uh, the Blu-ray of uh, of uh, Doctor Who. Well, I hope they go through all of them and get all of the episodes they have onto Blu-ray. Because I kind of started collecting Doctor Who DVDs, but then kind of didn't. So now they're doing Blu-rays, that's good. Uh, we, but we still have more for a Doctor. We've got the double sets to go. And this is uh, this one's kind of beat up. <laughs> they intentionally broke the wall, yeah. <laughs> it's like breaking the fourth wall, but cooler. Uh, this is the Doctor and the Silurians. Uh, I don't know if you guys have seen the uh, new Doctor Who, but they kind of made the Silurians uh, in the new Doctor Who a race where the uh, where the women were like uh, in charge, kind of a, a reverse role for like a male dominant society. They had a female dominant society, so all of the soldiers in the new Doctor Who for Silurians are are women. Pretty cool. This one had like a, a dinosaur in it. It's a pretty sweet. All right, next up. The Frontier in Space. Now this is what I prefer with this kind of artwork. This is like um, up, like hand-drawn style. It's very, very nicely drawn. And uh, this features the Draconians there, which is another race of enemy. They appeared in that uh, Dalek Killer comic, which is pretty cool. And uh, I believe they were called the Ogrons, those creatures there. They were servants of the Daleks. Um, and the Master was in cahoots with them all because he's a bad guy. And that's another great episode. Goes into space on that one. Pretty cool. Look at look at the master's outfit there. When he's when he's speaking to Joe Grant, the assistant. Look at that outfit. Honestly, he knew what he, he knew style. He knew space style. All right, this one's a crazy episode, and this is uh this is Inferno again with a kind of hand drawn style artwork artwork that I really like on these covers. Um, this episode um there was this kind of sludge coming up from b below the earth and it turned people into monsters also the doctor was trying to fix his TARDIS because his TARDIS was not working in this regeneration they kept it all on earth he was trying to fix it and he went to a different dimension and in that dimension there was like an evil version of the brigadier who wore an eye patch and it was pretty interesting it was pretty cool there's some clips of it on the back there with the kind of monsters that would appear uh, it was a it was a strange episode, but uh, unfortunately everyone from the ultimate dimension died, but he was able to get back to uh, save his world. How oh, you miss the old days? Oh, I know, right? You wish you could freeze things from advantage, 
from advancing so whole of technology remained. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean, man. I know what you mean. I mean, I liked, I really liked videos. When, when DVDs came around, I was really slow to adopt DVDs because I had the mindset that, like, DVDs can't rewind and fast forward very well. I found that really awkward. So I was, I was a big fan of videos for the longest time. It's only when you notice that, like, videos do deteriorate that you kind of think, yeah, I should get DVDs. DVDs last a lot longer. DVDs last, like, 25 years, and a video will only last about five. All right, next one. If you're an arachnophobic, you might want to look away because it is Planet of the Spiders, and this one freaked me out back in the day. And this is actually the episode where uh, the Doctor regenerates. Uh, this Doctor regenerates, that is, from, from John Pertree to Tom Baker. A uh, really interesting episode. Again, if you're scared of spiders, you probably don't want to see Sarah Jane Smith with a spider on her back. <gasps> um, yeah, the spiders um, went onto the back of people to control them. They were also kind of psychic as well. And there was this kind of chant that uh, people did. Um, the Om Mari Parigom, I think it was. I, they kept saying it over and over again to communicate with the spiders or use powers. It was a really interesting episode. And it is the one where he regenerates. Uh, so pretty cool. And then, uh, finally, the uh, Monster of Peladon. I think I might be mistaken. This is, the, this is the one. This is the one where the Ice Warriors... No, maybe this is the same one. <laughs> this might be a double. Either way. Either way, uh, or one in the same story. Um, I don't know. Um, this, this one you have Alpha Centauri and the good Ice Warriors. Uh, and then Sarah Jane Smith as well as the assistant. I think this is the same episode, or 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 along those same lines. Maybe I uh, maybe I have double. Who knows? All right, that's pretty cool. Uh, we're gonna go up to the next Doctor, and the next Doctor is Tom Baker, who is probably the favorite Doctor amongst everybody. Everybody loves Tom Baker, um, so we're gonna move on to Tom Baker now. And uh, first up, we have the uh, Brain of Morbius. Really cool cover art on this one. And it says, uh, it says this is for a complete unedited recording, because often they would cut off a little bit of these on the, uh, on the release when they showed it on uh, the television. And this is a really cool episode. This is like a very Frankenstein's monster style episode. So uh, Morbius is actually a Time Lord. But he doesn't have a body, he's just a brain in this kind of uh, container. And they make him a body out of bits. Like he has a claw arm, it's, it's, it's terrifying. <laughs> um, but it's really cool. And he has like a mind jewel with him as well. That's really cool. That I do remember. Um, Alright. That's a cool episode. And they have the Sisters of the Sacred Flame in there actually, which appear in the modern Doctor Who as well. Which is kind of cool. There's like a um, th there's like an in between episode for the movie Doctor, which was uh, which was not uh, released, but I think it was a, an extra where the the Sisters of the Flame helped him regenerate uh, into Christopher Eccleston, which is pretty cool. You take remember taking a uh, DVD out of the player and trying to figure out uh, how to rewind it. <laughs> oh my goodness! Yeah, I know, right? They were they were weird. Next up you have Pyramids of Mars. These have these uh, mummies which are actually robots. And this has Anubis in it. It was really scary. He would like grab the shoulders of, uh, of people and like kill them. I think he would like burn them or something. Steam would come off them either way. It was terrifying. And it had these robot mummies. And it had Pyramids on Mars. Uh, as the title suggests actually. Pretty cool. Uh, starring Tom Baker of course. The fourth Doctor. Excellent, excellent episode. All right, next up, another really cool one. Uh, monsters you might recognize from the current Doctor Who as well. Uh, Terror of the Zygons. That's right, Zygons are a weird alien. They look very strange and they use organic technology. And they can transform uh, into people. They can look like people, so they can shapeshift. Uh, really cool episode. Set in the Highlands. Nice. All right, I've got a ton of uh, Tom Baker, by the way. You may you may notice this because big fan of Tom Baker. All right, City of Death. Look at that monster. Look at that thing. 
Look at that cover. <laughs> look at that. Oh, it's just awesome. And then take a look at the fashion of this guy on, on the back here. This guy right here. Look at what he's wearing. This is amazing. And the bad guy is like... He, he kind of looks like how they made the human Dalek look in uh, one of the uh, later, more modern episodes. It's interesting. Oh, this episode I really love. Uh, Destiny of the Daleks. This one brings back Davros, creator of the Daleks. It also has these... Um, these robots here on the front uh, with the kind of like uh, white dreadlocks, I guess. And they were like an enemy of the Dalek there. But the problem was the Daleks and, and these robots were both incredibly logical. So they couldn't outweigh, uh, couldn't outwit each other in battle. They all did the same moves. Uh, so they needed the help of the Doctor to like end the battle, end the bloodshed. Pretty cool. Uh, and this one has um, Romana. As the as the assistant, who is also a time lord, and uh, we'll get on to more of that actually when I when we have a look at the uh, fourth Doctor special editions. All right, image of the Fendal. Look at that cover. <laughs> um, this one was another cool episode. It had like a weird worm type monster, and if I remember correctly, it it was uh it was bested by salt. Like salt would prevent it from coming to you. Um. Really weird episode. Cool episode, though, as they all are. All right. Legopolis with the Master in. Now, I believe this is the episode, um, or roundabouts, where Tom Baker regenerates into the next Doctor. And you can see the next Doctor, actually. Um, the, uh, I can't remember what they refer to him as, um, but he's there on, on the cover. And uh, he appears often uh kind of watching them and eventually you you discover that he is the regeneration oh there's there's a better image of him on the back uh eventually you find out that he is kind of the next stage of the doctor it's a very strange way for them to do the regeneration and there's these uh kind of weird aliens um that um they they work on typewriters i think it was like writing mathematics for the universe to stay as it is and I think they end up all dying. So like, and that puts a, that puts an end to the universe at some point in time. So it's a really crazy episode, and it is a regeneration episode. <laughs> you can look like people too. You just need to put proper pants and socks on, don't we all? <laughs> all right, the planet of evil. This is a good episode. Um, really cool. And then, and then with the artwork on the cover as well. Love it. And. Um, in this episode, they're on a weird alien planet. I believe this uses um, the, the, this uh, weird crystal that they've uh, come across before. And um, the, the planet, or, or it is something on the planet, makes people go kind of wrong, as it does for this individual here. And uh, yeah, cool episode. All right. The Android Invasion. Look at that. It's like they're burning uh, Tom Baker at the stake. And there you can see, like, an android being revealed as well. Pretty cool episode. What's strange about this is on the back, there's, like, pictures of the cover and not pictures of the episode. That's kind of strange. Huh. And then inside, there's advertisements for, um... There's advertisements for all kinds of things, like, um, tripods, which is cool, and then Red Dwarf and stuff like that. Pretty cool. And more Doctor Who videos as well. Oh, thank you, Trevor. You're awesome too, as well, buddy. You're, you're a boss. Thanks for joining me, my friends. And thanks to all of you for joining me and hitting that like button as well. You guys are great. Uh, next up, we have the Deadly Assassin. Now, this, uh, this monster in the background is actually the Master. In this episode, um, or pr just prior to this episode, um, Tom Baker, as the Doctor, is called to Gallifrey. And uh, he has to leave his assistant behind. I, I say he has to. He doesn't really have to. He just does. And he goes up against the master. Who has turned into this kind of weird husk. This like skeletal type monster. As you can see on the back there. Really really cool. Uh, and, and a lot of cool stuff happens in this episode. Like I believe he goes into a, a simulator world as well. Um, it's really cool. Alright another good episode. Is The Hand of Fear. Another one with Sarah Jane Smith. 
Now, in this one, they uncover this alien, which looks like this lady here, but it actually um, turns out to be uh, Brian Blessed. <laughs> because um, they find a hand of this alien, and it slowly regrows into its former self. Uh, and eventually, she persuades them to take her home to uh, her planet. Um, but when she returns to her final form, which is Brian Blessed, funnily enough, um, they find out she's not um, some righteous queen or what they think she might be. She's actually a mad king, and it's uh, it's bad news. So that's a, another really good episode. The Hand of Fear. All right, next up we have The Keeper of Draken. Another great episode. Man, I need to go back and rewatch a bunch of these. Probably we'll try and uh, try and pick them up on DVD or Blu-ray. Good episode. Has uh, has many more of the assistant uh, assistants in, or the companions as they would call them. Uh, next up, we have the Leisure Hive. <laughs> Another crazy one with a really weird looking cover right there. And uh, this one's got K9 in it as well. I can see on the back. So the Leisure Hive, allegedly stroll down Doctor Who videos. All right. Next one up, this one's a good one. The Ark in Space. Uh, as the title suggests, they're on an Ark in Space. I believe it's full of um, humans um, that are in stasis and these weird bug aliens have infested it. You need to come to England? Oh, I know right, Trevor. That would be awesome. Um, really cool episode. As they all are. I think I've said that for like all, almost all of them. Um, it's a good one. All right, another good one is the robots of death, not the robots of being nice, the robots of death. Uh, these robots, if I recall, they would uh, they would be kind of um, good guys, they, they were servants, but um, something caused their eyes to turn red and they would say, kill, 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 and evidently try and kill you. Um, this one had uh, the doctor's assistant who was like a barbarian uh, lady and um yeah she she was like she was less level than his other assistants she would be like you know what this guy's evil we should kill him it was kind of funny <laughs> all right robotic version of the village of the damned nice and uh, this one is the talons of wee shang and uh, this was uh, an oriental themed one as you can probably tell you can probably tell. Pretty cool there. What is this from? Moss for three ninety nine is what I got that from. Some of them still have the stickers on. Of uh, the price we would have paid for them. I would have paid for them. Alright. Horror of Fang Rock. I think this is the last one he has this assistant on. The kind of barbarian. Uh, I think this is the last one. Uh, there looks to be like some sort of sticker on the back here as well. So I like... like there was some sort of sticker on the back, still residue from it. It's like one of those awful security tags, you know those sort of things? Yeah, so like there's still a ton of that on. Um, this one had, I, I believe they were called the Rutans. I believe they were called the Rutans. They were enemy of the Sontarans. And they were, um, they were kind of an almost spectral ghost style creature. This was set in a, a lighthouse, by the way, which is pretty cool. Uh, they were like a spectral type creature that could possess people. Really cool. Um, there's something we'll go to um, later where it has them in as well, where they fight the Centaurans, and uh, that's that's pretty cool. You don't have to see the returns if I'm saying that right. All right, Nightmare of Eden is next up with the more modern style case. I prefer the art, the like actual done artwork. Uh, another Tom Baker episode here of the nightmare that is on Eden. All right. Next up we have the Revenge of the Cybermen. So Cybermen are vulnerable to gold. I believe that comes up in this episode. Uh, it's a weakness that they have. Pretty cool. I do prefer the, uh, the, the different cases though with artwork on them. Alright. Next one is the Sunmakers. But I can see uh, K9 on the front here. The, dogs, the, the Doctor's robot dog. Pretty cool. And then some clips of that on the back there. 
A lot of Tom Baker. A lot of Tom Baker. Alright, and then Underworld, another Tom Baker episode. As you can see on the back there, some more of that. I like that image of the uh of the TARDIS in the corner there actually. Pretty nice, you can barely see it though. And then here we have the invisible enemy. I kind of like the look of this case. This is a different style case. I like the look of that. And man, that enemy is not invisible at the back. That thing, that thing looks disgusting. Whatever that thing is. But I got this with purple haze for $12.99. Oh my goodness. All right. The Seeds of Doom. This is a good episode. So on the on this one, this is a double part as well. Uh, you can see on the back of the monsters here. Uh, the the people get taken over by this plant type monster, and it it's just it wants to kill humans and uh, you know keep the plants of the world alive. On the on the later part, there's the first part is in like an arctic area, like a snowy area, so they're kind of isolated with the monster, and then later on they move uh, back into the civilized world, uh, or so they think. There is a madman who is obsessed with plants, and he uses this. Uh, to make the monster again, and he makes a giant version of it. And he also tries to grind up uh, one of the good guys to make him into fertilizer. So that's pretty cool. Alright. Ah, two episodes here. The Centauran Experiment and Genesis of the Daleks. Alright, these are both very good episodes with Tom Baker in. Particularly Genesis of the Daleks. Centauran Experiment is really good. Um, as you as you might think, I see Tarwin is running experiments on humans, um, but Genesis of the Daleks is really good. It's an episode with Davros, the creator of the Daleks, and uh, Sarah Jane Smith as well as the assistant. Um, in this one, the Doctor has the opportunity to destroy the Daleks, but he doesn't do it. He could stop them before they become a thing, so he could stop his enemies. But he doesn't. He doesn't think he has the right to do that. And they pose the question in this episode. He poses that same question to Davros. And Davros, who is a maniac, says, If I had that power, I would have to do it. No, I would be compelled to do it. It would put me in the power of the gods to do such a thing. And yeah, he does that. And he goes on about making machines, uh, these Daleks that are so efficient they don't have emotions. Um, they end up killing him. He begs for mercy, and they have no concept of mercy because he didn't make him any concept of mercy. So yeah, destroyed by his own genius. What's my favorite episode? That is a really tricky episode. That is a, that's way up there though. It's gonna be a Tom Baker episode. It's definitely gonna be a Tom Baker episode. I would probably say it's gonna be my favorite. Um, Genesis of Daleks is way up there, but. Boy, I couldn't say it is too tricky. It's probably, I could probably pick a favorite doctor and it's probably going to be Tom Baker. And I think a lot of people will say that. But I like all of the doctors. And talking about that, who on earth is Tom Baker? That's right, uh, <laughs> this video looks into Tom Baker himself, uh, his crazy life. Pretty cool. Just a nice extra to have. And then I have a couple of special editions. For Tom Baker, first of these is the E Space trilogy. Um, e Space was like another dimension. If I recall correctly, the space itself in E Space was green. That was one of the things that separated it from our world. And uh, this is three videos inside of it, which is pretty cool. It has a uh, full circle. Uh, that has Adric in it. Adric is uh, one of the assistants of the Doctor who likes maths. So <laughs> there you go. Uh, Warrior's Gate. Another episode there. With Adric in and Muramana. I think, that's, I think this might be where they pick up Adric. Hey Slayer768, how are you doing my friend? What's up buddy? And State of Decay. And I think they leave Romana in eSpace. Um, so she can't ever come back to the uh, to the other dimension. I, I believe Romana, another Time Lord and assistant of Doctor, leaves him in E-Space. 
Tom Baker is quality. Yeah, you remember seeing an episode of Doctor Who, Tom Baker, and it was split into a, a cartoon version. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, that could be because they were missing some of the episodes. That that did happen. They have animated some of the other episodes uh, for some of them, especially for the early Doctors. They've done that a lot. And how are you doing, Slayer, my friend? All right. And then this one is a really big... This one's a really big one, and I was really happy back in the day about having this. I was really happy about this. And this is the key to time set. This is six videos all together. Whoop. All together. And look at that. On the side, they they make up this key to time uh, display. Really cool. They're all individual episodes, but all of these run in this big long story where this uh, maniacal force known as the Black Guardian and a White Guardian are kind of fighting over control of the universe for better or worse you know ultimate domination if you don't if you don't succeed everything will end uh, the white guardian enlists the help of the doctor to stop it so they end up searching for pieces of this uh, of this key and uh, it takes them through all of these adventures in fact one of them at the end is is a girl and it's it's a tough decision to do it as well but they need to do it to save the universe and this has a bunch of episodes in it. And I think, I think in pen, I look as one of them falls onto the counter. <laughs> one of them falls onto my desk. Um, I think on pen, I wrote the order of them there as well. All right. Let's uh, go pull out the first one here. This is the first one. How handy, just as planned. You only watched Doctor Who since it came back in 2005. That's fine. Like, I, I don't think you really need to look back. Especially, they seem to reboot Doctor Who every other, every other season now. So, like, whenever they bring in a new Doctor... They tend to kind of reboot it. And the first one in this is the uh, Ribus Operation. Now, this is a different actress, but this is also Romana. So Romana, um, the Time Lord, was a different woman. And then she regenerates later into that other woman that you would have saw on the other videos. And the other woman, actually, Tom Baker was, uh, was with at the time, but it didn't end well. <laughs> it didn't end well for them. They split up. Um, so yeah, um, but and that other woman as well was the last part of the key to time, so it's kind of crazy. I can't exactly remember how it ended up, but it was cool. Hey, Shandell, how are you doing? Welcome to the stream. And uh, the next one is the pirate planet. Look at this guy. Look at this guy here. How cool is that? On the on the left there. And uh, this guy had like a robotic bird on his shoulder, and he he sent that to kill people. And then next up here, for the third part, so I have these fortunately in order, is the Stones of Blood. Again with Romano as the assistant. The Stones of Blood. Alright. Then here we have the Androids of Tara. Cool episode. Look at that, uh, look at that, uh, character there. Like, that's just, that's just a fursuit. <laughs> That's just a fursuit. And then here we have the power of Kroll. This is a creepy episode with that giant monster. That creeps you out. Another cool episode there. Alright, and then the last part of this was the Armageddon Factor. Pretty cool, alright. And that was the last, uh, the last one with that Romana before she regenerated. She regenerated in there. Uh, in that in that episode, I saw you. I showed you where the Daleks were fighting another robot race with the kind of dreadlocks. All right, I'm gonna go put that back as it was. But for now, I'm just gonna drop it out of view. But I will put it back as it was. How many seasons? Oh, I couldn't even tell you. The show's been going for so long. Doctor Who's been going forever. Um, way way back. If you want to watch it, what I w what I would do is I would just watch the current season of Doctor Who. Uh, with the with the uh, with the woman doctor, and um, to be the foot because there's only been one season of that. Uh, the doctor regenerates into a woman. You don't see the regeneration. You don't need to know anything about Doctor Who to watch it. And I would see how you reckon to that. It's a really good season as well. And I would see what you reckon to that. Or you know um, the David Tennant seasons. People really like David Tennant as well in the modern seasons. I actually probably will get to some DVDs um, down the line of this video anyway. Anyway, that's all of my Tom Baker DVDs. 
that's all of Tom Baker. We're going to move on to the next Doctor. Um, who is... I'm going to grab it. This is not the next Doctor. This is the next Doctor. Alright. <laughs> I had them in some semblance of order. Alright. The next Doctor is Peter Davison. And that's Planet of Fire. This one also has the Master in. There's been so much hate about that season. That's fair. Um, I had no problem with it. Like, I'm a Doctor Who fan. I like all Doctor Who. Like, people, people can hate something if they want to hate it. That's fine. Like, um, but I liked it. I didn't think having the Doctor change effects of the show whatsoever. It's still a good show. They, I mean, they kind of do and they kind of don't. They've been resetting Doctor Who a lot. So they kind of continue from each other and they don't. But you can watch the new one has the most... Uh, the new one, you don't need to watch any any other Doctor Who to watch it, so that would be fine. But you definitely don't need to watch all Doctor Who in order to understand what's going on. I would say that it, it's just a time traveler who's an alien, and that's all you really need to know. And there you go. That's that's Planet of Fire, and this one has this weird alien in, uh, who I believe was some sort of bard. I say alien. I think he was a robot. The weird alien. All right. Make sure I pick from these in the right order. Otherwise, I'll get the Doctors out of sequence. Alright, and next up we have Time Flight. Don't remember much about this episode. There you go. The Doctor in... Um, the Doctor here had many assistants. Like, he had, he had, a, he had a, a virtual convoy of people with him at that point. Alright. And next up we have The Awakening... And Frontios, these are two episodes here in this set. Love that artwork on the back here. Uh, two episodes in this pack for the double set. Yeah, mighty, mighty, mighty. Another double set of that Doctor. The Visitation and Black Orchid. Look at that scary clown as well on the, on the bottom there. It's super bright, so you probably can't see it too well. But look at that scary clown. All right. Uh, in, in this episode, um, with this monster here, uh, the Doctor loses his sonic screwdriver. And it's as if he loses a dear friend. It really is. His sonic screwdriver is a device he uses to pretty much get out of any bad situation. It's like, it, it's like a screwdriver, but sonic is how he normally describes it. Um, it's really good. But yeah, I don't. I definitely don't hate any Doctor Who myself. I am because I am a big Doctor Who fan. So <laughs> I have no problem with the Doctor change, and the Doctor changes all the time. All right, Arc of Infinity, another Peter Davison episode with uh, bizarre monsters in this one. I get uh, adventures to Gallifrey. There are so many of them as well. Okay, this one's a bit of a tearjerker. And that's Earthshock. And the reason for this one is um, the Doctor's uh, young boy assistant, Adric, dies at the end of this. The Cybermen are in this. They're very emotional Cybermen, very um, unlike Cybermen, which is kind of strange. Uh, so that may be something that sort of brings up a bit of hate. <laughs> that's fine, because um, the Cybermen are kind of like, Ah, oh, Doctor, you respond to weakness. And like they, they kind of have upward inflection in the way they speak, like... They, they suggest that the Doctor is um, weak because of his emotions, because of his attachment to people. So they threaten, um, they threaten someone and it makes the Doctor do what they want. And they say that's a weakness. Hey, Jordan, how are you doing, my friend? So this is Sideman 1. And Adric dies at the end of it. And it's so tear-jerking um, that his, he has this um, symbol. I think it's a symbol of maths excellence, this star. The end credits, instead of showing the regular end credits for the, this episode, they just show that broken star. And then the credits go with, I think, no music. Adric was disliked, so I have to say that I wasn't, I, I wasn't too mad Adric died. <laughs> uh, the, a character Adric died, that is. It, it's probably one of those polarising things, like the current new Doctor is, is a bit polarising to some people. But, you know, at the time, because he was like a young kid that liked maths, so it was really hard to like Adric. <laughs> All right. Uh, Kinder, this episode, has the Maru in, which is this snake monster. 
um, really cool. Kind of, um, Maru is this weird entity um, that kind of um, goes after you. I believe at one stage it uh, it chases them through like a mirror, forcing them, forcing you to look at it as well. I think it gets power from that sort of thing. Uh, another cool episode. All right. Looks like he had a good send off. He did have a good send off. He had a whole episode uh, to send him off. Kind of like the, um, I don't know if you guys watch the Orville, it's like a kind of comedy version of Star Trek um, from Seth MacFarlane who does Family Guy and um, the Orville just uh, just sent off one character but they gave them a whole, they gave them a whole episode so it wasn't like bad. Um, Mordrian Undead. This is a weird episode, you've got these strange aliens with like their brain exposed but it kind of looks like they're wearing a hat. Um, another cool episode. Uh, I think, I think uh, this character here is still talking to the Black Guardian. I think the Black Guardian is still a thing around then. I could be wrong, might not remember. What's your opinion of the woman Doctor? You like the change? I have no, I have no problem with it. It's still Doctor Who to me. It always will be. Hey, Kudovic, how you doing, my friend? What's up, my friend? Welcome to the stream. We're looking at some Doctor Who VHSs. He has an accent. That's true. The, uh, the the doctor prior to that had an accent as well. MVL is a Time Lord. He won't regenerate though. Oh no! <laughs> I don't know if you guys have seen. I did um, I did uh, for one of the Danger Zone uh, things I did. Uh, I did a video of me filming inside of the set of the TARDIS, the real set. And it, it's like the last thing on the Danger Zone playlist at this time, because I've still got episodes to edit. But I filmed inside of the TARDIS. I got some like actual footage inside of there uh, for myself trying to pretend to be the Doctor, which is kind of cool. Uh, talking about regeneration, this is Resurrection of the Daleks. This is when you're bringing them back. Uh, again, it has Davros in. The Daleks do a lot of cool stuff here. They shoot people. It's always good to see that. I remain this way forever. I sure hope so. That's humming the Doctor Who theme. <laughs> Yeah, myself and Jonan also did that where we sort of like, it was one of those things where we kind of just improv it. We were playing, um, prior to that we did another kind of Star Fox like, um, I did them as like fake um, new Doctor Who trailers because I, I released them around about the time a new Doctor Who came, up, came out. Where's my sonic screwdriver? Aha, uh aha! -huh, uh -huh. You might say that, you might say that. Let me, let me go get my sonic screwdriver. Aha! Uh -huh. You thought you had me. But I do have a sonic screwdriver. Aha! I have a sonic screwdriver, of course I do. <laughs> I think it's slightly broken. Ah, look at that, look at that. Tiny, tiny, tiny. Mighty, mighty, mighty. Any problems with it? Now I'm, now I'm playing with a toy, guys. Now I'm playing with a toy. Look what you've done to me. Look what you've done. All right. <laughs> That's a cool sonic screwdriver. That would fix the world. <laughs> I know, right? I've scanned you all exactly. It does, it does everything. It does everything. All right. There's there's me playing with a toy. <laughs> ne next uh, next one. All right, jelly babies. Oh man, you know I got a jelly baby from Tom Baker. I uh, yeah, I legit got a jelly baby from Tom Baker. I think it was at Longleat when I met him, and I I never ate it because I was like I I was I just like I've got to <laughs> I've, I've got to keep it. <laughs> uh, that was cool. All right, snake dance. Another one with the Maru, that weird snake entity. Um, I believe it. Uh, the the Maru makes its way kind of on the arm of one of the Doctor's assistants as well. It might not be in this episode, it might be in another one. And there you go, there's that one. Nearing the end of the fifth Doctor here. Alright. Terminus. Another cool one with Peter Davison. Uh, this one, they're on a kind of space leper ship. And this one also looks like it has a Black Guardian. That's the Black Guardian there with that crazy kind of like uh, haircut. 
Another one with a uh, Black Guardian. And they're on like a space leopard ship, and they think they're all going to die. Alright. This one is probably the best Fifth Doctor one by far. And this is The Five Doctors. This is an amazing episode, bar one thing. Who did I say my favourite Doctor is? Probably Tom Baker. It's really hard not to say Tom Baker. Everyone's going to say Tom Baker, I think. Plus Tom Baker, yeah. What does a Doctor do for the games I have? There's a bunch of Doctor Who games, actually. I have a couple of Doctor Who games. I had one on the PC as well, where you played as... Where you played as Grark, who was um, who was like a creation of the Doctor to help save him. All right, the five Doctors. There's there's a problem with this one, and that is that Tom Baker uh, wasn't in it. Uh, he they used recycled footage. He didn't want to be in the five Doctors. You know, he pulled out. It kind of sucks. He did what Christopher Eccleston did to one of the later episodes. Either Tom Baker or Matt Smith. That's fair. Tom Baker's always going to be up there. This is. You know what, you asked me what my favourite episode is? It's either this or Tomb of the Cybermen. I said it was going to be a Tom Baker one, actually. But I now that I think about it, Tomb of the Cybermen is really good. I really like Tomb of the Cybermen. Tomb of the Cybermen. It's going to be Tomb of the Cybermen, my favourite episode. Um, yeah, um, it's, it's a shame that Tom Baker wasn't in this. They actually used archive footage from an episode that was never released. But since then, that episode has been kind of released. But it's been fixed. Um... It's it's been like uh, they've uh, they've added animation, so they've 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 fixed it. Uh, you know the rest of it that's not there, because uh, they never got around to finishing it. Unfortunately, this one's really cool. Uh, a lot of cool stuff happens. It's got Cybermen fighting a robot. It's just awesome. It's a really awesome episode. All right. Should I go back from start to beginning? I don't think you need to go from start to to uh, to. Yeah, I don't think you need to go from the start of Doc Two, and it would take you forever as well. I would say, as I suggested before, I would start with the current Doctor, see what you reckon, um, and then go from there. Like, maybe go from the start of the new Doctor Who, I guess, which starts with Christopher Eccleston. You've heard good things about the episode. Yeah, the Five Doctors is really good. Uh, this is the last one I have for this Doctor, I think, and it is Warriors of the Deep. And this one also features the Silurians as well. The Silurians are dying race in this. And uh, they actually need the Doctor's help. But they're still going about it the wrong way. And that this one's got this kind of weird uh, creature as well. This like... This dinosaur-like creature, which is just kind of two guys in like a weird suit. Um, you know, props-wise. Uh, props uh, and that's the last creature of its kind and they have to kill it as well to save people. Alright. So, uh, I actually have these next videos the wrong way round. That's why I grabbed them earlier by accident. So let me get the right ones first. <laughs> All right, here we have... This is, this is uh, probably the most polarizing Doctor anyway that I'm about to show you. Uh, I tried to organize these best as I could, but I had, a, I had a lot of videos to organize. This is the most polarizing Doctor by far. And I'm seeing one of the episodes is in the wrong place as well. So let me go and grab that as well. This is his best episode, actually, so I'll show you that. Sorry for all of the uh, noise of me moving stuff around. All right. So Colin Baker. At least they didn't uh, create a new Doctor to fill the gap in the, in the time war. Yeah, the time war. Yeah. But was, yeah, exactly. Mesmerizing. You could say that. Um, it, is, it is Colin Baker. He is the um, probably least liked Doctor. It, he had a lot of bad episodes, mostly because of the writing. So did the Doctor next, uh, in fairness as well. So, pretty polarizing Doctor. This is a really good... Uh, Trial of a Time Lord is actually really good. Hey, thanks for that, guys. Yeah, we've been getting a lot of subs recently, and it's all thanks to you guys and sharing the stream, your likes, and your watch time. You guys are awesome, so thank you so much, because, like... It's as much your channel, guys. You're amazing. Um, see, at, at this point, we've moved up to the 30th anniversary. We had the 20th anniversary of one of the other ones. We've moved up to the 30th now, and this is still on VHSs. You hear you got better treatment audiobooks. That's true. Uh, Big Finish do a lot of audiobooks, and I've got tons of those as well. I've got tons of those yesterday. Hey, Inspired Champion, how are you doing, my friend? What's up, buddy? Oh, that's great, Kunovich. Nice to hear, my friend. 
Oh, it's a great community, guys. Thank you so much. And Trevor and Inspired Champion, great to have you here, my friends. Um, the Trial of the Time Lord um, is a really good episode. This, um, this went up against Star Trek in that kind of time. I think Next Generation was going at this time. So they tried to step it up. And this is like a mega episode. It's, it's massive. And you can see I've, I've held this together with tape. This is like cardboard. And this, this episode is three episodes together. And it makes an overarching story. It was meant to be three separate episodes, but this, as soon as this doctor came in, he was already kind of on the way out. Uh, so it didn't work out great for him. Um, but there's three episodes here, one with a robot, um, one here with these creatures, and one with these like plant like monsters. The overarching story has this, um, has this uh, character here, who is uh, kind of like a, an evil version of the doctor from the future. And uh, this character is yet to show up. Um, he's kind of like a, a prosecutor um, for the doctor in the trial, and he's a real bad guy. And uh, it is suggested that he is a future regeneration of the doctor who's come back to steal his life. So that's something that could still happen in the future. And uh, yeah, I believe he's been uh, used in the audiobooks as well. So that's pretty cool. All right, another one here, which is uh, Avengers on Varos. Features that uh, alien that you would have seen in uh, Trial of Time Lord as well, which had some good graphics in it as well. Makes you feel like a friend that lives in a hometown. Yeah, you guys are all my friends. Thank you so much, guys. You guys are amazing. And uh, yep, and uh, if you want again, I I will play with my toy a little more. This bit comes off as well. I don't know why it just does. Anyway, um, features those aliens again. That kind of cool hand-drawn cover style again. Uh, on, on the back here. I think this is the last episode with uh, with this character, the Doctor's assistant here. And I think, I want to say she goes off with Brian Blessed again. Like, you know, Brian Blessed is in it again. I want to say that happens. Like, Brian Blessed is a different character. And she goes, and she goes off with him. And then here we have Time Lash with a very weird monster in it. Uh, not as big a fan as this style of cover as I am with the other ones. And uh, this has some really weird stuff going on in the back here. Some really weird monsters. I don't know if you guys can see that, but yeah, pretty, pretty, pretty bizarre looking. And then his his best episode, this Doctor's best episode by far, by far is the two Doctors. They're so bringing back Patrick Troughton in this episode. You also have this actress um, from Blake Seven as well. That's cool, dude. I'm glad you're into the uh, sci-fi stuff. It's great. And uh, this one's a really good one. And um, in this, uh, the the second Doctor, who has come back, uh, they kind of joined forces here, um, he gets um, a procedure done to him, and he starts turning into this uh, alien that's obsessed with food. Um, kind of weird, and it's like, it's, it's almost going to kill off the future Doctors by him changing into it. It's like a, a food obsessed alien, like chef aliens. Kind of weird. Oh, and it also has um, it also has some tyrants in it, as you can see, uh, down the bottom there. Some tyrants are also in it. As bad guys, of course they're bad guys. All right, another one of uh, this doctor, and it is uh, the Mark of the Rani. The Rani chef aliens, I know, right? They, that's what they are. <laughs> the Rani is another time lord. I believe it translates to something along the line of Queen. Uh, she's, so she's like a Queen type character. Um, the Rani is another Time Lord who hasn't had much, you know, time in it. Um, but she's another bad guy. And she experiments on people. She's bad, so is the Master. The Master's also in this one. Um, one of his better episodes. Food of Cessay is like Gordon Ramsay. Yeah, but less, less bad mouth than that. Alright. This one I got for fourteen ninety nine at Longley apparently. Oh, Longley! That brings back so many memories. They had uh, they had Doctor Who uh, they had Doctor Who stuff there. I used to go really far up to go to Longley to the Doctor Who stuff. And this has the greatest alien ever. Uh, this is the Happiness Patrol. And take a look at that monster. It's Robot Bertie Bassey from Licorice All Sorts. And that is genuinely what that monster is. We've moved on to the next Doctor, by the way. We've moved on to Sylvester McCoy, who I've actually been in a film with. I've been in a film with Sylvester Sloan. Uh, Sylvester Sloan? <laughs> Sylvester McCoy. We've worked on a film together. That's a real thing that happened. 
Um, so there you go. Um, Happiness Patrol. And this monster, you can see it there. It is, it is Bertie Bassey. <laughs> That's a thing. And I believe it says something like, Welcome to the candy kitchen, Doctor. I like my victims to die with smiles on their faces. That actually, that actually happens in it. What Longleat is, it, it, um, Longleat was kind of, um, Longleat was, um, it, it, it's, it's a place that kind of, it, it's a weird place, really. I, 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 I remember it had, like, animals on the outside that you would drive by, and then you would come into, like, what was, like, a big manor house or a castle. My memory's kind of fuzzy on it. Uh, but I remember I would only go there when Doctor Who stuff was happening, and I, like they obviously sold Doctor Who videos, and I bought some as well. You remember seeing clips of that monster? How did they get away with that? They got away with some weird stuff there. It was, I mean, that was a time that was very strange for Doctor Who. But Sylvester, Sylvester McCoy was a good Doctor. He just suffered from bad writing. And here we have the greatest show in the galaxy. Another scary clown here. Clowns are scary. Uh, in this episode. Uh, Sylvester M McCoy does a stunt where he walks away from like an exploding tent um, But the tent explodes way too much like way more than it should have done and like he almost gets the back of his head burnt off It's crazy, um, but that's the thing that happened And next up we have uh, Delta and the Bannerman uh, I remember little about this except this character who is kind of eccentric uh, but then again, there are there are a lot of these. I think this is when we had uh, no, this is not Ace yet. This is a different assistant. But we had Ace in later. There's some good Ace episodes. You know, I'm missing an episode of that as well, where the Daleks. Um, no, actually, I think it's. I think I've got it down here. So we'll get on to that. Um, this one, this one is a good one. I, I'm a big fan of the Cybermen. Outside, there's, it's it's quite outside, and then there's fire trucks racing by the house. <laughs> Alright, Silver Nemesis. Oh man, I remember watching this so much because it had, I like I said, I love Tomb of the Cybermen with uh, with Cybermen in, and this one I really like. It had a it had a load of Cybermen. They had like new shiny uh, armor on. They were Cybermen are also in the Five Doctors. I like Cybermen a lot. Uh, this was a really interesting episode. There was like this weird silver material that made into a statue uh, that this woman had made. And uh, the Cybermen wanted it. I can't remember why. Maybe they wanted to make Cybermen out of it. Or maybe they just wanted to control it. But uh, this one went all over the place. Like back in time, forward in time. It's a really good episode. And uh, this one, I believe, was another anniversary episode. And this is the extended version as well. Uh, and then, yeah. So moving on, this was another anniversary episode. Because we're, we're, Doctor Who's been going so long at this time. Time and the Rani. Another Rani episode. What's my favorite Doctor Who monster? Kind of obviously Cyberman, isn't it? I really like Cyberman. Um, another Rani episode. This is the one where he uh, regenerates into Sylvester McCoy from the previous Doctor. Um, the previous Doctor didn't shoot a regeneration scene. He refused to. So they just kind of turned the Doctor over um, from, from Colin Baker to Sylvester McCoy. And it is Sylvester McCoy. Um, he refused to film a regeneration scene. It's another Rani episode. Pretty cool. Uh, got these weird bat-like monsters in it as well. Alright. And uh, now we're moving on to, I think, uh, episodes with Ace in, who's uh, the Doctor's last in the original series assistant, before he got into the movies and stuff like that. Uh, the Curse of Fenric. Another weird one. Kind of like uh, vampire-like monsters, as you can see on the back there. I mean, Doctor Who's done all kinds of different monsters. So there you have, like, vampire monsters. Alright. Uh, here, this one, Survival. This one's really good. It's got cat monsters in as well. So, um, there's this, I think it's another world or another dimension where these cat monsters live. And they, uh, they send actual, I think, black cats out uh, into, into our world. And they capture people and take them back here. The master's been captured by this as well. And they start turning into monsters. Like bestial style. Uh, it happens to Ace as well. And it happens to the master. He almost loses it. Previously this was the last time you saw the master until the movie. And um, he fights like he brawls with the doctor. The doctor says if we fight like animals we'll die like animals. And they will indeed. Um, it's another really good episode. 
So I'm, I'm a big fan of that one. Why did they cancel the show in the first place? Diminishing ratings. Uh, the show had been going for so long, the budget kept going down. It couldn't compete with stuff like Star Trek, and the ratings just weren't there. Also, the chief at the time of BBC wasn't really into Doctor Who, didn't like sci-fi, um, and that's why. And it's just a good thing it came back. Like it came back, and it's going. It's going now. It's the longest-running TV sh uh, TV show like ever, I think. Um, so there's that. Really cool. All right, Paradise Towers. Uh, this one is as weird as it looks. As weird as it looks. Hey, Wrecking One Two Three Gaming, how you doing, my friend? This is a really weird one. Um, they're in a killer hotel. That's all you really need to know. And uh, I believe the the people in this have like weird catchphrases like "ice hot doctor" and stuff like that. But they're in a killer hotel. Am I? I'm fine, man. Thanks for asking, my friend. It's great to see you here. Thanks for stopping by, buddy. We're going over some Doctor Who VHSs. All right, next up we have Dragonfire. Yeah, Dragonfire sounds like a metal album, doesn't it? Pretty cool. And uh, this has uh, some weird monster at the back carrying a little girl. It looks like this one has Ace in as well as the other assistant. Probably where Ace was introduced. Actually, yeah, probably there. You can check out <laughs> when you like, but you can never leave exactly. Nice old school, yeah, it is old school stuff. All right, this is the one I was talking about. This is a, this is a really good one if you love the Daleks. Um, hey, Run Games, how you doing, my friend? Welcome to the stream. What's up, buddy? Uh, this one, another one. I believe the last one with Davros until the new series. Davros is like less than half a person at this point. He's like just monstrous. Uh, he's just bits. Uh, again, in a cardboard case. This one has two Dalek forces fighting. You've got uh, black Daleks and white Daleks. New, the white Daleks are new Daleks made by Davros, or the other way around. And they're fighting. There's like a special weapon Dalek, which uses a big cannon. It's really cool. And I think Ace comes into her own in this episode as well. They have a Dalek war. You see, you see in the background there, burning Daleks. Really good episode. Alright. Last of the VHSs before I move on to stuff uh, like DVDs and stuff. Actually, there are some more VHSs. I might quickly show you some um, some Blake 7 at the end, maybe. If you guys are into Blake 7, I'll show you some Blake 7. Um, but first up, we've got the kind of um, more obscure stuff. This is less obscure, of course. And it is uh, Doctor Who and the Daleks and the Daleks Invasion of Earth. These are movies. These are not this is another thing you can watch without watching any Doctor Who, because this isn't related to Doctor Who at all. Um, this is Peter Cushing playing Doctor Who. The Doctor's not a Time Lord. The, the Doctor's not a Time Lord on this, he's just a person. Blake Seven, never never saw it. Blake Seven's really good. Your friend loves Blake Seven. Blake Seven is amazing. And and it, again, it will have like really cool kind of drawn artwork, like this sort of thing. Um, the, you can watch these and not have watched any other Doctor Who. Um, it's Doctor Who and the Daleks and the Daleks Invasion of Earth, uh, 2150 AD. These are colour movies, they feature Peter Cushing as a Doctor. They are really good. Um, these were just like big movies, they, they weren't related to Doctor Who, they just used Doctor Who, so they've got nothing related to anything. It's its own story, kind of like a remake of the first two Dalek episodes. Kind of like a remake of those, but big movie style, big Hollywood style. Hey Sherlock, welcome to the stream my friend, how are you doing? And this one is really cool. It is K9 and Company. K9 and Company starring Elizabeth Sladen. So, you, I don't know if you guys know about the Sarah Jane adventures which came about with the new Doctor Who. And they tried to do that before with, uh, with her character Sarah Jane Smith. Back in the day with K9 and Company, so this is kind of like a pilot. So, like, the Asylum movies version of Doctor Who. I guess so. Are you doing good, Sean? That's good to hear, my friend. Uh, so, yeah, they tried to do, essentially, the Sarah Jane Adventures back in the day. And this is actually pretty good. You watch the Sarah Jane Adventures. Yeah, it's pretty cool. You should check out uh, K9 and Company. I actually really like this. It's, uh, it doesn't do much space stuff in it, but it's got K9 in it. It's pretty cool. You get more K9 in this than you do in Sarah Jane Adventures. 
He swear I could go to Hollywood with a pair of sunglasses and I'd be able to tell people I'm a director and nobody would question it. <laughs> That's fair. I don't think I have enough pockets to be a, a collector. A collector needs a lot of pockets. You're more into Sherlock, Sherlock. You don't say. <laughs> Alright. K9 and company. This is really good. I would recommend it. I would recommend it. This is after she departed from uh, from Doctor Who, obviously. We, yeah, exactly. Myself and Jonah, we did go to film school. <laughs> All right, this is this is a really obscure thing. This has not this has not been on DVD. Uh, VHS is the only way to get this. And uh, this is Shakedown: Return of the Centaurans. This has only been on VHS. There's no DVD copy of this. And this is this doesn't have the Doctor in. This is this is not a Doctor Who. This is just something they made afterwards. I think it's from Real Time Pictures, uh, kind of independent company, and they have a new design of some tyrants here that's only been used in this. An action packed sci fi thriller. So it's not even it doesn't even pretend to be Doctor Who, but it has some tyrants in, and it also has the Rutan in the alien I said that takes control of people. Um, it's really cool. They they're in like a space. Uh, race that runs on sails and um, they get boarded by some Taran who are looking for this alien the Ruton and um, it's really cool it's an unusual it's an unusual uh, episode I believe it has the actress of Ace yeah it does it has the actress of Ace in it she's not playing Ace uh, the, the doctor's assistant she's not playing it they have a they have a vague mention of the doctor in this uh, they call him. They call him the dentist. They said there's a guy called the dentist that knows of the weak point of Zentarans on the back of the neck. Uh, so this, this is probably pretty pretty hard found. It even says a new independent drama spin off of Doctor Who right there. So there you go. I have Sherlock Holmes. Um, I have Sherlock Holmes DVDs. I have the 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 British Sherlock Holmes DVDs when they um when they remade it. I also have a bunch of the old ones as well. A bunch of the old ones. In fact, I got. Um, with a copy of Sherlock Holmes' The Silver Earring I had, I think that came with a DVD as well. And then of course there's the... They did Hollywood movies as well, didn't they? But, um, I really do prefer the older BBC stuff, the, the new BBC stuff. Um, uh, yeah, I think it was, it was Moffat, wasn't it, that did the new BBC stuff? I think I prefer the older stuff. Alright, Downtime. This is another independent one. Uh, Moffat did a lot of Doctor Who though as well, so... Um, and coupling as well, which is also good. I'm just saying I prefer the older stuff. Uh, another one, the Yeti are back, and this is another non-Doctor Who. This is like a spin-off. Um, I don't know if this is in DVD or not. Uh, and this one, the Yeti are back. Moffat and Gattis. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, because all right, and uh, the Yeti are back in this all-new independent spin-off. So another spin-off, another one by Real Time. Don't know if this ever made it on onto uh, DVD again. Uh, and this has the uh, the actress Sarah Jane Smith in it. Pretty cool. Again, VHS might be the only way you can actually find these. And then two other spin-offs of Doctor Who from uh, Probe. And this is uh, The Devil of Winterbourne. And this features Peter Davison, but he's not playing the Doctor in this. He's not the Doctor. It's a British X-Files style thing in in the Doctor Who universe. Uh, that's what it's, it's as. And they did a bunch of these, real time did them. Pretty cool, just uh, just a, a neat thing to have in the collection. And then another episode of Probe. Um, this one, Colin Baker, Sylvester McCoy and John Pertry. Again, not playing the Doctors in this. And um, this is the Zero Imperative. Tom Baker was a short actor, that's pretty cool. Tom Baker's done everything, he's a badass. And that's the Zero Imperative. Alright. That's all of the uh, VHSs except for, except for um, Blake 7, which I'll get onto. But I'm going to stick with Doctor Who right now. I do have Doctor Who DVDs. I, do, I had picked up Doctor Who DVDs. I started to try and pick them up. Uh, they're like this Hawkswood of the 80s. Yeah, pretty much. I started trying to get uh, Doctor Who DVDs happening. Now they're coming onto Blu-rays. They did that with, um, with the Seeds of Evil. Which I only had the, the VHS for without the case. I think I think I have that on Blu-ray, just don't know where it is. I have the movies actually, the Doctor Who movies. I have them on Blu-ray, I just don't know where they are. But well, anyway, DVDs. Let's take a look at these. First up we have 
Doctor Who the Aztecs uh, first Doctor DVD pretty cool I like the style they do these they look pretty good to me and next up this was a very later release this would have never been on VHS funny enough you can get some really good DVDs for second hand shops that's mostly where I pick them up these days because I don't want to pay a lot of money for DVDs so that's a good shout the enemy of the world limited edition uh, it actually has a different cover if you open it up, which is really cool. And this was discovered overseas. This was a lost episode, and it came to DVD. Go to BBC to do that. Otherwise, we would have never had this. This was never released prior. Only would have been on TV once and lost. They found it. Lost episode. An enemy of the world. Um, the Doctor's going up against another... Uh, another bad guy who's played by the same actor as the Doctor. It's really cool. And uh, they, they fight in it. It's uh, it's pretty badass. Alright, The Crotons. Another Second Doctor episode. Great to have these on DVD. Take up less space than VHSs. That's The Crotons. I like the cases as well, nice and uniform. And here we have The Seeds of Death. This is a really good one. I had this on VHS. Don't know where it's gone. I lost it. Uh, this is an Ice Warrior episode. Ice Warriors are really cool. Good band, guys. I like this style of case, although it doesn't show great uh, pictures of it. This is, of course, a black and white one. Uh, here we have the Invasion. And this is a special edition one. One of many that has added animated footage in. To fix the missing episodes. They have the audio for all of the episodes. But they're missing some parts of the video. But this one fills it in with animation. And that's the invasion. Another second Doctor adventure. And here we have the war games. This is really good. The war games. This is the episode where this Doctor regenerates into the third Doctor. Where Patrick Troughton regenerates. And he gets captured by the Time Lords. At the end of the war game, pretty cool. Only saw the Cold War, but like the Ice Warrior in it, the Ice Warriors are badass. Alright, next up, we have the Green Death. Oh, this is the one with the maggots in. Okay, this is the one with the maggots in. Scary maggots. I think we have this on Blu ray somewhere. Uh, pretty cool one with uh, the Third Doctor. Uh, it's got like bugs and maggots as the monsters, so if that sort of thing scares you, this is a scary episode. I'm making quite the pile of shame over here. Right. Pyramids of Mars. I had that on VHS. Good to have it on blue on uh, DVD. Yeah, uh, will play perfectly fine on DVD. Showed you that early on VHS with the uh, with the robot mummies. Good episode. We also have um, Genesis of the Daleks, which I also had on video. And this is uh, got a sleeve, a special sleeve on this. As you can see. Other than that, I'd actually better to show you the back of this because it looks better on the back of this than it does on the real thing. A bunch of special features on the DVDs as well. They can fit more in. So that's pretty cool. One of my favourite episodes, Genesis of the Daleks. Uh, because of the interaction between the Doctor and uh, and uh, Davros. Really cool. Another one of my favourite episodes. The Five Doctors. Really, really, really good. Um, I can't stress enough. Even though it doesn't have Tom Baker in. It's got him a little bit, but he doesn't do much. And this is uh, one of various versions that they did of this. This one's got the Cybermen in. You know I love the Cybermen. Cybermen get beaten up by a robot in this. And then the, uh, the actual front of this looks a bit different for the uh, special edition. Pretty cool. Go to the back of that with uh, some of the... Does, it, does the Cyberman go to war with this robot? It's pretty badass. Uh, I like this episode a lot. Good to have it on DVD. Even better to have it on Blu-ray. And then because I love that episode so much, The Five Doctors again on DVD. You love Sherlock and Doctor Who? That's awesome, my friend. I might have to show like more stuff off like this as well. It's pretty fun. 
Uh, this is the 25th anniversary edition. So I have the special edition. This is the anniversary edition. Had to have it. Love this episode. Um, th this one I think has um, extra content in. Like they do up the graphics and stuff. Um, I don't know how I feel about that. But it's still cool. Still cool to have it. Into Star Wars a lot as well. Star Wars is awesome. I've got a lot of Star Wars figures. I got a lot of Star Wars figures around. I don't have a lightsaber though, so unlike the uh unlike unlike the uh Sonic screwdriver, I can't go grab a lightsaber. We need to check that. Yeah, I know, right? It's probably on uh it's probably on Blu-ray now as well. So that would probably be the best way to look at it. I I mentioned that I really like the two doctors. Here's the two doctors on DVD. Colin Baker one with uh Patrick Troughton in as well. Another good episode with with the evil chefs in, with the evil space chefs. And then uh, nearly toward the end of the DVDs, Revelation of the Daleks. I said I really like these ones. This one was, is, has Colin Baker in. Uh, this one's a bit weird. The Davros episode, they like make Daleks out of people in this one as well. It's an interesting episode. An interesting episode as many of the Colin Baker ones are. All right. And now let's take a look at some more Doctor Who DVDs. These ones I actually discovered I, I had or I forgot I had. So they kind of came out of the woodwork as it were. And um, today as I was looking for this stuff. It is Doctor Who The Beginning. This is really cool. Uh, this is the, the Unearthly Child. And the Daleks and the Edge of Destruction. So the first couple of episodes all in one set for DVD. Really cool. I'm, I'm very happy to have this. Um, this, that is awesome. And that is, um, so here's the unearthly child. The Doctor's granddaughter, who he abandons on Earth, I will say. Uh, first episode of Doctor Who, one of the first. And is, uh, is the Daleks. On DVD, good to have that as well. There you go. And the Edge of Destruction. There's so many of them have the BBC were really good to put them all out on DVD. A lot of credit to that. And and they make they're putting them out in seasons. Um in, in big series, in big compilations on Blu-ray. I hope they do that for all of them. I really hope they do. Because it would be nice just to have a couple of Blu-rays and not masses of DVDs. That would save a lot of space. And then, another one I found as well, is a New Beginning, a set with the Master in. Also really cool to have this on DVD. Uh, Keeper of Traken, Logopolis, and uh, Castavalar. This is where the Doctor would uh, regenerate in these episodes as well. So it goes from Tom Baker all the way to Peter Davison as well. Uh, so there's the uh, Castavala, Vala, yeah, Peter Davison episode. Oh, look at that. No reason to love Europe. Actually, that's another thing. The uh, the DVDs are cheaper in Europe. They're much easier to find in Europe than they are in the in the US. There's Logopolis. I had that on VHS. Um, I've I've heard our collectors say that the uh, the VHSs are really really hard to find. Not the VHSs, sorry. Uh, the DVDs are really hard to find in the US, and they're more expensive for the region. But for their region copies, our region copies are much cheaper. Because DVDs are region encoded, because that's a thing. Which is a shame, but, uh, you know, that's how it is. I believe they'll have different artwork as well. Which is cool, cool as well. BBC puts out uh, better content than uh, others. That, that BBC puts out a lot of quality stuff. Alright, special edition DVDs. I have a couple of these. First up. For what many people, uh, panelists see exactly, yeah, it's like, I don't know why region locking is still a thing, because, um, you know, we all use the same format now with HDMI, but region locking is still a thing, apparently. Um, for what many people will consider the first Doctor, but this is the return of Doctor Who, and that is with Christopher Eccleston, and it says the first series, the complete first series. This isn't the first series of Doctor Who, but... Sure, why not? This is the new Doctor Who with Christopher Eccleston and Rose Tyler. 
And this is in a police box. How cool is this? Check this out. It opens up. And you can see inside of that with all the discs and everything. How cool is that? Pretty badass, right? It looks like the interior of a TARDIS with all the discs in there and everything. And uh, Doctor Who Confidential as well. That is pretty awesome, isn't it? That's pretty badass. Falling to bits a little bit, but it is cool. Another thing's cool. You know, you guys know how I like Cybermen. How much do you think that I want to be a Cyberman? Okay, that's enough messing around. This is uh, another DVD set in a Cyberman head. For this is the new design of Cyberman. Billy Piper. Oh yeah, I know, right? This is cool. Another new set. I haven't opened this in a while. I didn't struggle with it as much. And this is uh look at look at how nice that is put in there as well. Uh, with this reflective cover with David Tennant. They call it the second season, second series. Not the second series of Doctor Who, is it? You know, but that's what they call it. And on the back, we have a Cyberman. Reflective Cyberman. Delete. Delete. Pretty cool. That's really nice. Alright. Put that back there. You're a sucker for the confidentials. Yeah, the only problem I had with the confidentials is they were just always weird. Like, they would never say, like, this went wrong in this episode. They were always like, everything went perfectly and we're amazing. Like, can you not just say, like... They did it once. On an episode of Torchwood, there was a monster, like a shadow of a monster. And they said it didn't go the way they wanted. That's the only time they ever said anything went wrong. Alright. David Tennant is awesome. Yeah, a lot of people really like David Tennant. He's the Tom Baker of the new Doctor Who, for sure. Alright, and then... Lastly, I have a couple of Blu-rays. Well, I have more, but I couldn't find them. Let me try and get this stuff to where I can show it easily. Alright, couple of Blu-rays. Steelbook for what they call the, the first series. I really liked Christopher Eccleston. I think it's a shame he didn't come back for the uh, multiple Doctor episode. But then, who we got as the War Doctor? Can't complain about that. That was awesome. Um, but there you go, the Steelbook. It's still sealed. Sealed! No reason to open it. I've seen them all before. Uh, you know, some of these were gifts, uh, as it is. Bad Wolf on the back there. Some of these were gifts. Some of them I bought and just didn't need to open. Um, next up, again, sealed. Um, the 50th anniversary edition. So here, we, when we get to Blu-rays, we're all the way up to 50 years now. 50 years of Doctor Who. 50th anniversary. We, we went from 20 back in the time when I had, you know, when I had videos of the set we were still in we were still in 20 and we're all the way up to 50 now don't we all feel so old now don't we <laughs> he was a great doctor i know right he was in jessica jones he was jessica jones was really good uh it's a shame that netflix dropped the ball on those on those uh shows um but other than that yeah those shows were great um and yet yeah, this is the um this is the matt smith era um blu-ray special edition collector's edition Sealed! Uh, don't really have any reason to open it at this time. May open it, you know, may watch the episodes, but uh, who knows? Um, so, you know, some of these I got as a gift uh, uh, along the way. And, um, all right. So, next up, we have um, Doctor Who, the complete, uh, they call this the eighth series, Collector's Edition. That is pretty crazy when you really think about it. It is crazy, Jonan, I know, right? <laughs> Look at that, it looks really nice, has like a blueprint of a Dalek on the back. And like the blueprints of tires on the front. This is a, a Blu-ray in here. Uh, this is a really good Doctor as well. And then on the back of that, Peter Capaldi, he was great. Uh, his first episode was so good. His first episode. And the gang they had as well along with him was so good. Um, I really think that the gang, um, like the um, Silurian and the um, Sontaran and the other lady, um, they should have their own miniseries. That would be really good. Alright, and uh, that is almost the end. And a couple more of these again, gifts and things like that. Daredevil Jones, Luke Cage, Punisher. Yeah, they were so good. Iron Fist, 
they were so good. It's it's a shame that Disney and Netflix have kind of fallen out. Um, yeah, it's a shame. Like some of those shows were really good. All right, um, Doctor Who: The Return of Doctor Mysterio. This is a good episode. I've seen it. Uh, this is the Blu-ray version. Uh, there's this superhero type character. Capaldi and Smith had great starts, but episodes got yeah, that's true. That's true. They kind of fell. What shows that Matt Smith before? Matt Smith's been in a lot of stuff. He's been in Terminator as well. Matt Smith's done a lot of stuff. And then uh, the Monster Collection, the Daleks Collection, still sealed. A um, bunch of Dalek episodes and one. Uh, I think this is a DVD. I was about to say Blu-ray. And then uh, this is the Monster Collection, the Master, uh, as he appears in the uh, in the new series. Hey Link, how are you doing my friend? Welcome to the stream buddy. And Vladimir, what's up my friend? How are you doing buddy? What's up guys? And then lastly, um, I have some Blake 7 I can show you. Um, as I wanted to show you how like the um, how the, the artwork looked on the front of these, so I might as well. Um, Blake 7 is another really good British series. So these I have this all kind of hand drawn artwork. Here's the beginning. Again, we're back to VHSs. You mentioned it before. Uh, you forgot the name. The creatures that hunt them down and when he regenerates um, a split floor. I, d I don't know. I feel like they might be Silurians, Trevor. In like they, I remember them breaking through a wall. Blake 7, if you haven't watched it, really, really good. Hey, thanks for the like, Rowdy. Much appreciated, my friend. Um, here's after the beginning. We have The Jewel. Another really good episode. Love it. Uh, there you got the bad guy there. The, the bad guy there with the eye patch. Fighting him down. Catch you later, Inspired. Thanks for stopping by, my friend. Awesome to have you here, and I'll catch you next time, buddy. And then Orak, the sequel to Jewel. Love the artwork. It's all hand. It's all hand drawn for these covers. They used to do that back in the day instead of like Photoshop. And um, Blake Seven, classic British sci-fi. Classic. If you haven't seen it, check it out. Check it out. Um, bunch of episodes here, including Time Squad, um, Cygnus Alpha there as well. They're the kind of, um, their equivalent of Stormtroopers there. Then on the back there. I think this is the one where they go to like a planet. And um, Blake has to duel, um, duel his, his, his enemy on this planet. No, it's not this one. It's a later one. Uh, but he has to duel that guy with the eye patch, and it's really cool. They have to fight with like sticks and stuff to get their technology taken away. It's really cool. And they have these kind of vampire like like uh, monsters the bad guys have. Uh, the Mission Destiny Jewel. This is probably it. Jewel, his enemy there. And you can see it here it has two complete unedited episodes, and this is drawn. It looks really good. No worries, Slayer. Thanks for joining, my friend. Take it easy, buddy, and I'll catch you next time. Creature catches him and kills him, and then he regenerates. Oh no, I I know what you mean, Trevor. That's on one of the modern episodes where he's trying to break through a wall. Yeah, he's like he's like punching the wall. Yeah, it's on one of the um, it's a Matt Smith episode, right? He's punching the wall. Um, no, it's not Matt Smith. It's Capaldi. It's a Capaldi episode. He gets trapped in this kind of um. He gets trapped in this kind of um weird place. You done a cartoon link? That's awesome, my friend. I have to check that out. Uh, yep. Bunch of episodes on the mission to Destiny and Jewel. Really cool. Uh, Jewel is the one where um, Travis, that's his name, with the eye patch, tracks down Blade and uh, they have to battle. Really cool. There's like these, um, there's like these, um, a time compression dog. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, they're having a fight on this planet and they have to fight with like sticks and stuff. It's such a badass episode. Uh, but a lady from the Liberator ship is there as well. And um, one of um, Travis's pilots, who's like a vampire lady, is there as well. It's so good. Alright. Aftermath and power play on this one. This is where they start to introduce some more characters. Really cool. These episodes are really great. Uh, here we have Volcano and Dawn of the Gods. Another one, I think, that introduces a character. There's this lady here. She's like psychic. Or she's got mind powers. Pretty cool. They started to go a bit into fantasy here, um, a bit away from sci fi. Managed to get Metroid Prime to play properly on computer. That's awesome, Trevor. Metroid Prime is awesome. Um, the Harvest of Kairos 
here. And uh, City at the Edge of the World, that's Villa there, he's a computer expert. Or Avon. Who's a badass. Uh, some episodes from those, some clips from those episodes. A couple more of these. I just really like the covers of these because they're hand drawn. Looks pretty cool. Um, Sarcophagus and Ultra World. They're just the artwork is really awesome. I really enjoy it. There's some clips of those episodes. If you're not familiar with Blake Seven, you should check it out. I know this is a Doctor Who collection. I'm showing Blake Seven, but still BBC. Uh, this one was originally seven ninety nine apparently, and this is uh. Morlock and Death Watch with uh, some of the characters from the Liberator there and Death Watch nice and then uh, Terminal Rescue here again that hand drawn artwork is really cool there's the big bad guy in the back there as well that lady he's a real bad person he ends up getting them all and then we have uh, Power Traitor here. There's some artwork of her as well. Like that hand drawn artwork is so cool. I really enjoy that. Uh, Power Traitor episodes as well. You're psychic. Sort of, you predict you'll be eating soon. That's fair. That is fair. And um, Star Drive Animals here as well. There's an episode on, on Blake 7 as well where they kind of crash and they have to reintroduce all the characters. When this series start, oh, it's such a long time ago. It's it's in that kind of like, um, it's in that kind of um mid, like somewhere around the Tom Baker I think era in that kind of era of uh, BBC shows. So in in a, you know early color Doctor Doctor Who kind of stuff, pretty cool. Um, you know around around the third or fourth Doctor, but it's been, it's it's a real long it's a real old series as well, but it's really good. All right, guys. That is all of the uh, of the videos, man. I've got uh, I've got a ton of videos lying around me right now. I'm gonna have to sort all of that out. Also picked up a couple of games. I should say picked up. Trade made a trade, made a trade with uh, the Jonah Monkey for a couple of Zelda games uh, that I've been after. Really happy about this. Traded a bunch of um, games that I had doubles of. So I traded a bunch of games. Uh, Jonah actually wanted to go like free for free, like free. We traded, uh, I traded free games off him. He wanted to go free games for free, but it was like the value of like his games, like there was Zelda, you know, cartridges are like around about 20 pounds. It was like, oh, that's ridiculous, man. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta go like at least value. So I, I, gave, him, I gave him a good amount of stuff. <laughs> I know, right, Jonah? Um, I got some good stuff though. Uh, so here it is. I'll catch you later, Rowdy, my friend. See you next time, buddy. Uh, first up, um, I think we spoke about this previously, that I was after this. It was uh, Zelda Link's Awakening DX. This is a really good game. This is the color version for the Game Boy Color. And then secondly, um, for the Game Boy, uh, it, Game Boy Color again, we have uh, The Legend of Zelda Oracle of Ages. And as well as Oracle of Ages, I also got myself... Uh, Oracle of Seasons. I'm really happy about that. I'm gonna get playing these. Really good games. Want to swap game rooms, SB? <laughs> Only if yours is twice as big as mine, my friend. <laughs> All right. And uh, that's about it, guys. I made an awesome trade with my friend, the Jonin Monkey. Um, got him a bunch of good games. I uh, picked up some Zelda's that I was after. Great games, all free. Thank you very much, Jonan. You're awesome, my friend. And uh, thank you guys for watching. If you like the video, please leave a like or a comment. Let me know what you think. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already for some more awesome content. Thank you for watching once again. I've been MVL in this crazy, crazy video. Um, awesome MVL, thank you for making the night with Dr. Extravaganza. Thank you guys for watching. And I will see you next time.